Hi everyone, I'm Les. And I'm Ashley. And you're listening to Anthropotamus, where we explore some of your favorite anthropology topics. Hi everyone, welcome to our special Anthropology Day episode. We're here with Mr. David Homa, who teaches Los, at Los Gatos High and West Valley College, um, who teaches anthropology and economics, correct? Yes. So thank you for coming on the show today. This is a, a top. So I'm actually excited about anthropology. I'm actually giving a presentation to a bunch of sixth graders. So hopefully <laughs> you can give some t- tips for me today. But um, for those who don't know, anthropology, it, anthropology day is every year in February is to celebrate anthropology and spread the word on what it is we do. So um, our focus today is mainly anthropology within the K through 12 school system, how we can encourage it and talk a little bit to David about his experiences. So first question. So you do incorporate anthropology into, um, into your lessons at Los Gatos. Hi, can you, can you explain a little bit? How is it you go about that? What are the lessons like? Well, Unfortunately, anthropology is something that oftentimes people aren't overly familiar with um, at the K-12 level. They may have heard of it. They may have seen Indiana Jones, but that tends to be their primary reference. And so the objective that I've been working on for a couple decades now, both with the American Anthropological Association and also in my own uh, work at the high school, I taught a full year long Four Fields Anthropology course for a decade. But one of the things that you find is that even though people may be somewhat familiar with it, it doesn't tend to be something that's taught at the high school level and certainly not at the level below that. And so it tends to be something that just gets incorporated. And the few of us that do teach it at the K-12 level, we tend to be little islands of our own. And you're not really sure who's doing it where. And so it tends to be content that you mix in with whatever it happens to be taught. And so as an example, uh, I teach economics to high school seniors. And the best thing to do is to bring in behavioral economics so that you can actually help them understand why people do what they do from an economic standpoint. And that's where I almost subversively bring in the anthropology, I guess is a good way to put it. Maybe subversive is a good word for this. I was going to say, subversive seems like a strange choice of words to me, um, because you don't want it to be necessarily... uh, underhanded or any kind of sneakiness about it I, I feel like anthropology should be shared openly and um, like honestly and and less that's a great point and maybe subversive isn't the best word but it seems sometimes over again the many years that I've incorporated it that the students don't recognize it directly unless I am very direct with me saying, this is anthropology that you are learning. And that's kind of funny because it does seem to me in all of the different classes that I've taken uh, for anthropology and all the books that I've read that it's, we have such a wide discipline that it seems more like a mindset applied to any given field. I ex- I completely agree. Yeah, it, it does, it does t- tend to be a mindset. And I think that's where it can be put into, in some respects, many different fields, not just in the social science field at the K-12 level, but even at the elementary level, when you're doing history or you're, whether it's world history or U.S. history. And as there is more and more, I think, over the past even decade, an emphasis on really understanding others. Anthropology can play a a, a vital role at any level, uh, helping the teacher be able to 
not make it, and, and granted, this is my opinion, but I think anthropology helps with some of the topics in today's classroom not be political as much as it is just an understanding by using anthropology. I absolutely agree. I, I think that anthropology has a ton to offer, especially in um, K through 12. Mm -hmm. Well, and one of the things I see is specifically cultural anthropology playing a key role in the state of California is the new law that's been passed in which starting, I believe it's with the class of 2029, the graduating class, every student must have a semester of ethnic studies as a graduation requirement. Yeah, my, my wife and I were very excited to see that, uh, that happen. That, uh, we just saw that recently, yeah. Yeah, and so this, to me, is an absolutely perfect integration of anthropology, and this goes back to what I mentioned just a little bit earlier, to try to take, unfortunately, too many people are politicizing ethnic studies. And if we could bring in where it was more of an understanding from a cultural context through the lens of anthropology instead of the politics of ethnic studies and the many things that people have been talking about related to that, I think that may help those who, both the, not just parents, but I think even at some level students and even some teachers who may see this at some level in a, I don't want to say a threatening way, but a challenging way. So that's where anthropology definitely could play a huge role in that. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, the status quo is, in a way, being challenged here, but it's not a threat. It's providing information. You know, yes. If anything, it's a way of broadening. I mean, there's no better weapon against fear than information. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think that's where another example, if I can return to um, really, the first question is how I put anthropology into my class. I'm a, I guess I would say I'm a little bit of an anomaly. Over the past decade, I have, long before we had Zoom school, I've been teaching my classes back in Los Gatos uh, via Skype to begin with and then Zoom from different parts of the world so that I actually... Uh, the first time I taught from a different location, I w was working with some schools in Kasumu, Kenya, near uh, in the east western part of Kenya, and so yeah, I went to Kenya, and there was a sub in my classroom, and he turned on the computer, and I was up on the screen, and I could see my students, and I taught my classes from a completely different location in real time. And over the past decade now, I've taught from Kenya a number of times. Um, I have taught from India. I have taught actually from northern Iraq just three years ago, next month. And so what I, what I find fascinating about that is, is, again, it's not anthropology directly, but it's students being able to talk in real time. When I was in northern Iraq, I, there was this very nice mall in Erbil, and I took my students into the grocery store. And, and now I have my iPhone and my AirPods, and I just walk around with them. And as I was walking through the mall, people would stop me and ask me what I was doing, and we would start a conversation and it's that real-time connection with people that aren't in a textbook but are kind of real-life breathing people that the students can interact with. And it takes the other out of it, I think. And so um, I actually, I'll be 
the last two years, needless to say, because of the pandemic, that's been um, put on the side. But this April, I'll be going to Eastern Europe, the former Yugoslavia, and I'll be teaching my classes from there. I was supposed to go to Ukraine, but I think I'll pass on that for right now. <laughs> what advice do you have for teachers and homeschool parents who want to include anthropology into their lessons? Yeah, so a good thing to do, the American Anthropological Association is developing more and more, not just content, but also different things that allow, whether a kindergarten teacher or a 12th grade teacher or um, somebody who's teaching from home, information to help not just do a lesson on what is cultural anthropology, but to help better understand how it can be incorporated. And that's where you have a growing body of websites that where it may not, if you type in anthropology, it may not pop up, but it also is a better understanding of what's not just available, but also a good way to incorporate it. So for example, there is an organization Explore, and they have great short little lessons taught from different parts of the world to help integrate it at almost any level. And it also can be dependent on the Sometimes the, the teacher or the parent's comfort level, at, at a level, um, with what topics that you would want to bring in. But it's also, I think, to me, anthropology is about asking questions. And asking questions to say, well, why do people do this? Why are people here? Where are they going? How do they make those choices? And that's where you can have a really good conversation, again, whether it's a young child or an older student, to help them start to look at their own world through this lens of anthropology. And so I think sometimes it's important not to get stuck just on the word anthropology, but how and why and where and when do people do the things they do? So here's a specific example. If you have a, say, young child that's even kindergarten through third grade, it's not something that, again, has to be a specific lesson. It can be simply taking that young person, even on a weekend, to a grocery store and looking at where different things come from, right? Where... Where does this food come from? And start to ask questions. Well, what do you think it tastes like? You know, and then if you go to the 12th grade level, well, try to connect the kids with the things that are familiar to them to introduce the, the differences that may ex exist someplace else. And that's something as simple as music. Most kids listen to music. What does a high school student in Kasumu, Kenya listen to? And... When I've done exchanges with other schools, with my students, that's what, it, that's what it goes to. Like we have done calls in real time with students at the Kasumu Boys School and Girls School. And it doesn't take long for kids to say, well, what do you do on Friday night? You know, what music do you listen to? What books are you reading? And to me, the key thing is having people see how similar we are in real ways, not just trying to make it a lesson. Yeah, a lot of times I, I feel like if you intentionally say this is a lesson, you're going to get resistance you know, yes. right off the bat. But if it, if it becomes a dialogue, if it becomes just people sharing things about themselves, then it's something else entirely. Yes. And we live in a world where we can do that now. We have access to communication with people across the globe in yeah. seconds. Yes. Yeah. And 
uh, as as a parent who homeschools, I already feel overwhelmed with just the basic lessons I have to teach her. So for me, it's like, well, how, I mean, as an anthropology major, I'm like, I really want to incorporate anthropology, but how can I do this and not make it seem overwhelming? Yeah. And that's where I think, depending on the age level of the student, what interests you? What curiosities do you have about the world around you? And because especially younger children, they don't know much of anything. I mean, you know, they don't know the larger world necessarily. So the, the, the teacher, again, whether it's in a, in a classroom or the parent at home, can, can use their interests and their curiosities to incorporate their understanding and, and of the world itself. Again, the, the website I was mentioning before that is a great website, Explorer Classroom, has short, I mean, for all age levels, but short little videos. And, and what's really great about this website is they often incorporate short videos, short lessons of different age groups. So the kids who go to this website or the teachers who use this website see people like themselves. And as I was saying before, like when the high school students would go, well, what are you doing on Friday? That's, if you can make those connections to see that they're not an other, they're similar to you. And, and I think that's where the parents, like you said, it can be overwhelming. What do I do? Well, it's like a buffet. If there's too many choices, you don't know where to start. So the best thing to do is just pick an area, pick a food you like, and try to introduce that in a way that you understand and works for you. I feel like for me, the buffet isn't a good example because I start at one end and get everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, whatever example works for you. I think that just sounds like anthropology to me. Let's sample it all. Yes. Yeah, well, it, yeah, but it can be overwhelming. So, oh, I yeah, think, for... you know, you it, it's good to... Um, and uh, something that I definitely try to get the kids to think about, and this is one of the reasons why I teach from overseas uh, whenever I can, is life is a full sensory experience. And unfortunately, education is often just one, maybe two senses. And, you know, oftentimes smell and taste and even touch are never part of education. Yet anthropology brings in all five senses in a way to help us understand the world. And I, I wish education had more of that in it. Let's be honest, the classroom students are sitting in today is essentially the same as it was a hundred years ago, but the world's moved on yet education sometimes doesn't feel like it has. Well, at least one thing's moved on. The classrooms are a bit more crowded. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm hoping that as, as difficult and challenging and sometimes as terrible as zoom school was, I, I hope that that allowed people to see the possibility of not switching to that, but incorporating and being able to explore the larger world and maybe talk with and, and learn from people in different parts of the world. Even whether, I, I, not just social science, but a math class, a science class, an English class. Um, a, a great example related to English, even though it was in my social entrepreneurship class, so a really interesting thing that I did with my students and the students at the boys' school in Kasumu was there's a Kenyan author by the name of Ngugi Wa Thiongo, and he wrote a book called The River Between, and it's set in Kenya. And so I had my students read a section of it, and then the students, the Kenyan students, read a section of it, and then we did a Zoom call 
And the students actually were able to discuss their understanding of this book so that instead of just my students reading it from their lens, they were able to say, well, I don't quite understand this passage. How does this, why was it this way? And the Kenyan students, being a book written in and about Kenyans, were able to help them understand in a way that I as a teacher never could have. So I am hoping that, again, as much as it can be challenging to use the technology, the time differences, that we push ourselves to try to bring people together. And at the end of the year, when I ask my students, well, what did you learn from this experience working with students in Kenya? Many of the students said, it made me realize they're really no different than I am. And, and, and maybe that goes back to earlier in this conversation. You're right. Subversive isn't a good word, but it's a way that the kids don't even realize that anthropology is being used. Maybe you meant subtle. Subtle, yes. Maybe that's a better word. <laughs> yeah. But, but even, teach, even uh, parents at home, uh, you know, there's, there's different connections that can be made where you could even make a conversation, have a conversation with somebody in some other part of the world so that even kids at home can, can interact with and make those connections. So, David, how is it that you plan to celebrate Anthropology Day this year with your students? Well, I'm actually going to do something I was just talking about. We're not reading a book, but I but we do um, a call with students in Kenya so that my students can spend a half hour just talking with kids just like them at some other place in the world. I'm here thinking, who do I know on the other side of the world? <laughs> Uh, Les, do you have any other questions? I think, uh, David, you pretty much answered my questions without me having to ask my questions. <laughs> well, uh, I just wanted to, to ask, um, since we're on the subject of Anthropology Day, uh, can you tell us about what uh, does does um, the AAA have any plans for Anthropology Day? So one of the really cool things that for this Anthropology Day that will be happening. It's a matchmaking program and teachers were able to sign up to have an anthropologist zoom in to a class to actually talk about anthropology. So it's a great way for teachers who don't necessarily maybe even know anything about anthropology in particular or the students to have a professor of anthropology spend some time with them and again use that technology to bring somebody into the classroom that normally wouldn't be there and so it's a great way for teachers and students and i think the anthropologist to make connections i will be doing that i am not a professor somehow i volunteered myself to do that <laughs> for a friend um and there i'm 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 I said I, my field is biological anthropology, but they're trans, they're about to start a new unit on early Indian civilization in this valley. So now somehow I'm giving a, a talk on archaeology and the Harappa civilization. <laughs> and I'm like, I am, I was like, I guess technically I am more qualified because I've taken archaeology classes and my, I, I study early civilizations, but I'm like, Okay, sure. I'll talk about that. <laughs> but it, exactly, and I think I think sometimes that anthropologists almost are a little afraid and think, I don't know how I can fit this in. I don't, you know, but it's 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 more to me the 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 interest and even the enthusiasm that somebody who's in the field of anthropology can bring 
And that enthusiasm is what gets kids to go, oh, this is really interesting. If you're interested, they're much more likely to want to participate and want to listen. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Some of my best teachers were just, um, well, history teachers, to be honest. And usually it was the things that they found interesting that were the most um, engaging topics. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and I think that, and maybe this isn't the best term to use, but if the anthropologists are just excited and almost being a cheerleader, so to speak, of what they really love, that will draw people in. And, and that can be the best marketing there is. David, do you have any other comments? Well, not that I can think of off the top of my head, but I, I, I think I've said most of the things. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I love the field, and I just am always happy to sing its praises. I suppose, um, especially for the K twelve level. Well, you've definitely shared a lot of that passion today, and I hope you continue to do so. I will. Thank you all for listening. Distribution of Anthropotamus is in collaboration with the American Anthropological Association. Please continue to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Anthropotamus for our latest episodes, show notes, and book discussion schedule.